Nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you. So uh, just to start, I was not prepared for what I saw when I watched this movie. I was, there's been so many biopics and documentaries done about Ted Kaczynski over the years that I was not expecting this to be as impactful as it was. It's just such a, from the opening, just the very beginning when the score hits and you're just seeing him standing there in the woods, it's just very different than what I was expecting. And there's a human element but there's also this surreal element to it. What was the way, did you approach us trying to humanize Ted Kaczynski or how did you even get inside the mind of a person like this? Uh, thanks for the comments. Um, yeah, it was, um, you know, I knew the story a little bit and, uh, and then the further you dug in and realized how complicated it was. And like you're saying, you know, there's been so many biopics and just, kind of generic stuff on the serial killer, you know, um, that has just kind of gotten a little too, you know, just sort of boring at this point. So wanted to just be completely subjective with Ted, you know, um, and the more we learned about him, the easier of a process in script writing, you know, that that became because he's a very complicated figure. So, um, you know, there was just so much about him. And then, you know, the fact that we went through tens of thousands of pages of material, uh, you know, from his diaries and the archives, you know, we kind of under got into his head and that allowed us to be more fantastical at moments, um, you know, and because we're just with one person, we also wanted to have it be as alive as possible, you know, so not be overwrought with just realism and have it be super stern. We wanted to be super expressive and kind of throw the whole arsenal of cinema at it, you know, um, and have it be really sort of oversaturated and music and just, really place you and have this kind of wild experience where you're you're conflicted because you see his bad acts but you're also relating to his rage or his ideas and you know allow you to be you know the interpreter of what you see on the screen and not be some sort of morality tale or lecturing you know what is right and what is wrong and so we really want to get away from vilification narratives and um you know and then just you know really you know, recreate as accurate as possible what it was like to be Ted. And part of that was also filming in the exact location. And then Charlto being who he is and giving his all to recreating, you know, as accurate as possible, what Ted's personality was, you know, what made it tick. Yeah, that's something that was quite surprising given how many adaptations or, you know, versions of, of his story have been done that just on basic things, like just nobody did his voice and his energy level you know, correctly. And you'd sort of be like, well, why wouldn't you do that? Or his accent or whatever. He's not, you know, he's a, he's a far more interesting figure. So, you know, obviously as an actor, you, I mean, even the idea of humanizing, if you're playing a human being is strange to me, because obviously everybody is, hu you know, humans are human beings and right. they're all going to have emotions and they're all going to have, you know, learning about how lonely he was, for example, how he yearned for female company specifically um, at such a profound level. That would that would impact him how much he loved nature how much he loved the environment so it wasn't it wasn't particularly i mean he was to me he was an extremist but he wasn't a crazy person he 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 held extreme views about the value of nature and the planet and what technology were, were going to do and he was prepared to fight for those views um so to me it wasn't a, a very difficult thing to find the the humanity in there certainly his reason for going to war as he as he sort of did in a sense um, is as valid to me if, the, if, if it can ever be a valid reason to, to go to battle and kill people is I haven't heard of another one that's more valid, you know, like, you know, I'm fighting for my family. I'm fighting for gold. I'm fighting for my religion. It's, he's like, I'm fighting for the future of the human race and the planet and the animals and the trees. And so I'll die for that. I mean, it's like, okay, well, it's not what I would do, but it's certainly human. Sure. Yeah. And in looking to portray Ted Kaczynski, did you, there's elements that I can see in your performance here where it's, you know, there have always in the real news records and interviews and all of the research that there is out there, there's people questioning, was he psychotic? Was he schizophrenic? Mm -hmm. Was he autistic? Mm -hmm. Maybe Asperger's mm -hmm. or something like that. Did yes. you use any research and elements into that? Or did you just play based on the writing and who he was as a person? 
I just played based on the writing and, and what I could see. He was incredibly, as far as I could see in all the writings that I read, he was staggeringly self-aware, stagger, staggeringly perceptive and honest about people and their motivations. He was incredibly accurate at reading personalities, whether he was talking about his brother or different people in his life or his mom. He, he, he would be a you know, tough person to face in terms of pointing your flaws out to you. Um, I, I didn't know. I didn't attempt to. Sh I, I didn't see anything or come across anything that would make me feel like this is a crazy person. You know, it's struggling to relate to people in a certain sense. Yes. Um, but I didn't try and project anything else on top of that in terms of some, you know, psychiatric condition or anything. And there is a lot of there was a lot of controversy when the movie Joker came out a couple of years ago because it was people were worried that audiences were going to sympathize with a, an evil character to find that. But there's moments in this, I mean, growing up and seeing this unfold on the news, mm. people just hated him without even knowing who he was. He was a monster. But watching this, there are moments, the scene in the, li in the, the library with the books, with, mm. with Becky, that entire moment, you can see in your eyes, there's a humanity there and you feel sympathy yeah. Do you feel like getting inside of playing this person that did you find sympathy for his mindset or did you still have that distance? This is a bad person for lack of a better way of putting it. I definitely found the sympathy. I, I think it, uh, there's an enormous amount of hypocrisy when people speak of violence, you know, in, in that context, humans are extremely violent. You know, I, 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 I think this is more, a look into what makes people violent. So if you talk about people being worried that we're going to sympathize with violence, I think that's a valid concern, but then we should look at everything that we make in Hollywood as a community. You know, frankly, there's violence in everything. We glorify it every single day. This movie is not glorifying violence. This movie is actually going into where's that line where people will suddenly go like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to, I'm, violence is going to start. And, it's, and it sits just below the surface. And so to be naive enough to assume that we as a society who love watching violent media daily have got that out of our system and we've, and we've progressed past that and it's only bad guys like Ted that have that in them. It's very naive, I think. It's just inaccurate, you know? Yeah. And so Tony... I definitely, I definitely, yeah, I definitely had sympathy for him for his position, um, you know, as you would if you jumped into to, to almost anybody's skin you know really if, as an actor that's your job is to find the sympathy and and say nobody is to me nobody is either good or bad only i mean that's what we as artists are supposed to be looking at and increasingly i think the world's trying to do that trying to say this, there's good and bad people it's like no man there's people yeah. are extremely complicated it is gray area yeah and tony i do have to ask the it's a beautiful film, like just the way it's shot. It's just so there's lingering shots of the landscape and nature and you really appreciate the beauty and all of that. But I got to ask, the score is just, it's one of the best scores that I've heard in a long time. I've been a fan of Blank Mass for a long time. And what, what did you have input in the type of sound that you wanted or did they bring that to you? How did that come about? Uh, yeah, um, I knew Blank Mass's music for a while and then his previous project uh fuck buttons um and uh you know a, and i actually have a performing arts center that i run with my wife and he played so just you know the power of his music i knew really well you know from the recording to the live sound to live performance um and uh yeah we just you know kind of just hit it off you know and uh you know, some stuff we worked on uh, a lot and some stuff he just dropped in my lap and was incredible. Like that opening piece of music. That was one of the first things he sent me. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a natural fit, you know? And uh, he just got the film so well. Uh, it was, you know, um, and we just worked over it for three, four months. He's in the UK and, you know, it was during COVID and we just passed stuff back and forth. And sometimes I'd even manipulate a few things. And, um yeah it was it was a pretty it was an amazing experience you know um but i think we just sonically were very like like-minded and he understood emotionally what the film needed and uh and yeah just did an incredible job well i really appreciate your time it's a phenomenal film beautiful film stunning performance here and i, I really hope everybody gets a chance to check it out thank you so much for your time okay thanks, thanks. man thanks for your support okay. thank you cheers alex bye
The Industrial Revolution has been a disaster for the human race. Oil poured into the south at the rate of 20,000 gallons an hour. The Montana Electric Company sprays cancer-causing herbicides without any warnings to the public. I cried about what was happening to the country. Desecration. But I have a plan for revenge. People say violence and the taking of human life is not a way to resolve problems. It can't work. But history shows that it very often does work. my own mind. I think my own thoughts and then I do what I think I should do. I want to kill some people. We have breaking news. It's been more than five days since the Unabomber threatened to blow up an airliner flying in or out of Los Angeles. Motive? I want to change the world.